arguably the most important teaching of the Buddha. is a very simple teaching. This one word, apamada. Apamada. Apamada comes from the root mud. Mud in regards to uh, being muddled, I suppose in regards to being intoxicated. Or in regards to intoxicating, referring to a thing that causes intoxication. So it's a word, root that is used uh, in the five precepts. The fifth precept, sura meraya manja pamadatana. Pamadatana. It's a, these things like alcohol and mudja, drugs, uh, intoxicants, things that cause mud. Pamadatana that are a basis for pamada. So it describes what alcohol does. One way of understanding pamada, or one type of pamada, would be the effects of alcohol, the effects of drugs like marijuana or uh, heroin and, and harder drugs. The root, the prefix pa pamada, and so mud. The root mud is more likely just being muddled or confused or clouded in the mind, and pamada means being intoxicated. Appamada, the a at the beginning just as a negation. So the Buddha's teaching is to be unintoxicated. And why I can confidently say this is most likely the, or at least arguably, most important teaching of the Buddha is first because of the Buddha's words, what we see in the Sutta Pitaka, in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, the Dika Nikaya. The Mahaparinibbana Sutta is a very long discourse that talks about the Buddha's end of his days, the, the days and weeks leading up to the Buddha's passing. But of course the crux of it is the Buddha's passing and his final words. And his final words were quite simple. He said, Vaya Dhamma Sankara all formations, everything that it comes about in this world is vaya, has the nature of fading away. There's nothing permanent. Those were his penultimate words. Because then he says, apamadena sampadeta. Sampadeta means to become. It's an exhortation. He's saying, become or well, a little more than become, become attained or at, become accomplished in or attained to, saying, go and train yourself in. In what? Appamada. His last words. We have another example in the Dhammapada, in the Samavati Vatsu where the Buddha says, Appamado namiyanti, uh, Appamado amatapadang. Appamada is the path to uh, the deathless, amata, meaning uh, freedom from samsara, nibbana. Appamada is the path. Appamado machuno padang. Appamada uh, this is intoxication, is the path to death. Appamatta namiyanti, those who are appamada never die. Ye pamatta yatamata, those who are pamada 
are so already dead. No, very powerful words. The Visuddhimagga goes even, well, explains and remarks on this by describing Pamada in this way. It says, Sakalampihi te pitakang buddhavacanang aharitva taking together the whole of the three pitakas, the Vinaya pitaka, the Sutta pitaka, the Abhidhamma pitaka, all of the Buddha Vachana, the words of the Buddha. Katiya manang apamada pada meva utarati. Utarati, you can, when, when you condense it and summarize it, it comes down to the apamada pada, the path to apamada. All of the Buddha's teaching, it says, and with good reason. Now, that's all well and good, but what does it mean? What does the word mean? We can say it means to be intoxicated, but obviously we're not talking about uh, drugs or alcohol. The Buddha's teaching isn't just don't do drugs. And so we have to think in a more uh, figurative sense or a more broader sense. We have to expand our understanding of what it means to be intoxicated. And it doesn't have to, it isn't exactly figurative because there is a sense in which someone who is in a certain state of mind without drugs or alcohol is intoxicated. And we use this sort of figuratively, we say, to talk about a person. Suppose a person is consumed by anger person is consumed by anger, you might say they're intoxicated. We talk about people being intoxicated with power, but it's really just greed and delusion, the ego. Um, I guess we mostly refer to the delusion part, where a person is uh, arrogant and conceited, we say they're intoxicated. And it is a kind of intoxication. The mind is not clear. There's not a, a sense of objectivity. And one does not work for peace, happiness, freedom from suffering. One acts rashly, harmfully, harming themselves and others, creating stress and suffering and sickness in the mind, both for oneself and, and others. And of course, greed, when one, is addic when one has a strong addiction to things, it doesn't have to be drugs. We've got enough drugs in our brain, the, the m brain chemicals that fire when we get what we want, uh, to be highly intoxicated, to become intoxicated when we even just ha have food that we want, when we see something that we lust after and so on. So that helps us to think of intoxication in, in a broader sense. And you can think, well, certainly the Buddha did teach us these things, that greed is dangerous and anger is dangerous and delusion is dangerous, and these are the three causes of unwholesome. So if you think of the extreme versions of these, you can appreciate that these are things that intoxicate the mind. But a much simpler way to understand it, and the way the Buddha actually talked about apamada, he didn't talk about it in terms of the, the, the defilements uh, or the absence of the defilements, he, 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 even though that's what it involves. He talked about it in a much more simpler sense. The simplest explanation of what pamade, apamada is, well, the Buddha said, there's actually a quote where the Buddha said, satya avipo aso apamato tivachiti. Someone who is free from who is, sorry, is never without mindfulness. Such a person is apamada. And this indirectly helps us understand the, the word mindfulness, or sati, which isn't very well translated as mindfulness. So it's another word that it's hard to translate. But if you want to understand what sati means, you can think of it in terms of being sober, being free from intoxication having a mind that has clarity. Or rather, mindfulness is um, 
manifests itself for you to understand when you're mindful and not mindful as clarity or mindfulness leads to clarity so if you want to understand the experience of mindfulness a person who is never without mindfulness has clarity feels sober so consider the difference between a state of mind that is present and aware and in touch with the experience is the seeing, knowing that it's seeing, hearing, knowing that it's hearing, present with these experiences as they happen moment by moment. Compare it to a mind that's even just distracted, lost in conceptual thought, caught up by the past and future, not to mention reacting and judging the mind states that are, are truly intoxicated. Appamada really involves this clarity of mind that comes from being mindful when we engage in the practice of the four satipatthanas. That's another reason why the four satipatthanas are so important because they really are a description of how to be appamada, which is the, well, the Buddha's last words to us and you could say his most important teaching. There's another more detailed explanation that is worth mentioning as well that includes some other things. It's actually sort of incidental, I think. I don't think the teaching is... It's in the Anguttara Nikaya Book of Force, but it's actually talking about um, people in whatever religion or, or recluses or religious people, people who are practicing the spiritual life. And it says... Um, one who is truly in a state of apamada, who is, who is sober, who is, has clarity of mind, requires four things. And so the first is abhayapano, having no ill will towards others. Or more, uh, more broadly, having no anger whatsoever. It doesn't have to be to another person. Uh, anger is such a... Um, an intoxicating thing that you can be angry at, at inanimate objects. You might be angry and you start throwing things. You're angry and you start hitting yourself. You know, or obviously hurting others, but even uh, just inanimate objects. You stub your toe on, a, on something and you kick it. You get angry at it. But it's intoxicated, right? The mind is not clear. Ambiyapano. And the second is sadasato. So they're kind of out of order if you want to understand them, but this is just the, it's a verse. This is a verse at the end of the Buddhist teaching. Sadasato means always mindful. So it's at the core here. Be always mindful. Uh, ajatang susamahito, the third one. Ajatang susamahito, to have internal tranquility. So mindfulness often pairs with this tranquility, and it's, important, it's an important aspect of the practice. There really isn't much distinction, and you shouldn't try to think of it as two different practices. But this, um, this teaching really uh, is more of a description. Because again, you don't have to practice not being angry if you're mindful. The clarity will prevent you from reacting. Clarity, ha clarity of mind has that effect. When you see things truly clear, clear, clearly, anger and greed will not arise. But the, the important point of breaking it up into four parts is to describe it, to describe the aspects of what it's like. To, what would you use to describe a person who is truly mindful and has a clarity of mind? who is appamada, well, they never get angry. They're always mindful. It means they're always in touch with reality. When something happens, they're not surprised, they're not shocked, they're not taken off guard. They're at every moment uh, ready and prepared for change, for loss, for gain, for the vicissitudes of life, unshaken. And they are calm because of the mindfulness. You see, sama sati, sama samadhi. Because of right mindfulness, there is 
uh, right concentration. So the mind becomes focused, becomes tranquil. Such a person is calm, is at peace. And the fourth one, abhijja vinaye sikham. Abhijja vinaye. Abhijja is greed. It's another way of saying greed, desire. Vinaye sikham. Training in freeing oneself from desire. And uh, my teacher, when he taught this, when I first heard this verse, he pointed out the difference here, which I think is interesting is that uh, the tr technically the, there's a difference between the anger and greed. Uh, greed is something you have to train yourself to overcome. So the Buddha's, the nuance here, the Buddha's words and his usage of words could be interesting. If you think of the fact that greed is so much more of a challenge in a way than, than anger. In a way. I mean, they kind of go in pairs. Anger will... Um, come as a result of greed when you don't get what you want, of course you'll get upset, and that's anger. However, putting greed in the middle, in, in, in the, at the root of, of our training, r reminds us back to how the Buddha described the cause of suffering. I mean, the cause of suffering is craving, is tanha. And so it is useful in a way to think of Craving is something that we have to train ourselves out of. It's not something you can just cut off. Training is a really good focus. Uh, craving is a really good focus for your training, your training of mindfulness. It al also is worth noting that mindfulness doesn't just turn these things off. A person who is training in mindfulness is only training to be mindful. It doesn't mean they are mindful. If you, s if you practice an hour of walking, an hour of sitting, it doesn't mean you are mindful for an hour or an hour or two hours. Mindfulness is something that you engage in. It's different from what we call vipassana. It's different from many other aspects of the Buddha's teaching, say concentration. Concentration isn't something you practice. We talk about practicing samadhi. But really, samadhi is something you gain from the practice. It has to come, as I said from before, from sila. And sila, at the deepest level, has to involve mindfulness, clarity about your experiences, because it's the lack of clarity, like darkness, that allows the defilements to grow, like uh, fungus, or like, like unclean things grow in the dark. But when you shine a powerful light, sunlight is a disinfectant. What do they say? Sunlight is the greatest disinfectant. And what is meant? It's a it's a metaphor. The, the it's a figure figure of speech, meant to uh, describe the value of clarity, the value of of understanding, of facing and confronting, rather than allowing, avoiding and allowing things to fester. So mindfulness is the activity which makes it different from the results. So when you practice mindfulness, yes, you gain tranquility, you also gain clarity. And as a result of that clarity, there is freedom from anger and freedom from greed gradually. Uh, as you, as a result, the mindfulness frees you from these things, but only temporarily. And it's only the accumulation of moments of mindfulness that allow for real change, change of habits, and eventual change of perspective, where the way you see things changes radically from there's there are things worth clinging to to there's nothing in the world worth clinging to and when a person reaches that state not intellectually but as the moment of clarity that wait a minute nothing i mean it's not a thought you know but it's just an epiphany a, 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 and it's more than an epiphany it doesn't even do it justice it's a moment 
of clarity, where the mind understands perfectly, nothing is worth clinging to. That is the moment when the mind lets go, when it's that letting go that leads to freedom. So this is why Appamada is the Amatapada, the path to the deathless. So worth uh, mentioning, it's a fairly simple teaching, but it's important in terms of helping us understand what it means to be mindful. If you think of the ordinary state of being as being to some extent intoxicated, then you can, um, you can realize that uh, what it means to be mindful when you experience the freedom from the muddled state. When you engage in the practice of mindfulness, you can see the difference. You see the moments when your mind is clear and you realize how muddled you were before and you appreciate the, the meaning of the word pamada and apamada in a way that is far more profound and subtle than simply taking drugs or alcohol or being consumed by greed or anger or delusion that we're constantly steeped in these things and our minds are not clear. And it's only through the practice of mindfulness that our minds develop this clarity and become apamada. So that's the teaching. Thank you for listening.